Additional Induction Motor Protective Elements Having a clear understanding of the motor thermal model and how to properly set its components provides us with a good start to the process of protecting an induction motor. There are, however, a few additional protective elements which we will examine. Some of these elements, such as instantaneous overcurrent element, are required to provide adequate protection for an induction motor, while others, such as jam detection, are popular options which may enhance the overall protection scheme. The elements that we will examine are short circuit protection, ground fault protection, differential protection, single phase protection, undercurrent protection, and under and over voltage protection. Short circuit protection. The short circuit element provides protection for excessively high overcurrent faults. Phase to phase and phase to ground faults are common types of short circuits. The short circuit trip element is coordinated with external upstream fuses such that the element will operate first. When a motor starts, the starting current, which is typically six times the full load current rating of the motor, has asymmetrical components. These asymmetrical currents may cause one phase to see as much as 1.7 times the normal RMS starting current. As a result, the pickup of the short circuit element must be set higher than the maximum asymmetrical starting currents seen by the phase CTs to avoid nuisance tripping. The rule of thumb is to set the short circuit protection pickup to a value which is at least 1.7 times the maximum expected symmetrical starting current of the motor. This allows the motor to start without nuisance tripping. It is important to note that the device that the relay is to control under such conditions must have an interrupting capacity equal to or greater than the maximum available fault current. Ground faults. A ground fault is a fault that creates a path for current to flow from one of the phases directly to the neutral through the earth bypassing the load. This current is sometimes referred to as zero sequence current. Damage to a phase conductor's insulation and internal shorts due to moisture within the motor are common causes of ground faults. A strategy that is typically used to limit the level of the ground fault current is to connect an impedance between the supply's neutral and ground. This impedance can be in the form of a resistor or grounding transformer sized to ensure that the maximum ground fault current is limited to no more than 10 amps to reduce the chances of metal damage to the motor. There are several ways by which a ground fault can be detected. The most desirable method is to use the zero-sequence CT approach. This is considered the best method of ground fault detection methods due to its sensitivity and inherent noise immunity. All phase conductors are passed through the window of the same CT referred to as the zero-sequence CT. Under normal circumstances, the three phase currents will sum to zero, resulting in an output of zero from the zero-sequence CT's secondary. If one of the motor's phases were to short to ground, the sum of the phase currents would no longer equal zero, causing a current to flow in the secondary of the zero sequence. This current would be detected by the relay as a ground fault. The residual ground fault connection. If the cables are too large to fit through the zero sequence CT's window, or the trench is too narrow to fit the zero sequence CT, the residual ground fault configuration can be used. This configuration is inherently less sensitive than that of the zero-sequence configuration, owing to the fact that the differential CTs are not perfectly matched. During the motor start, the motor's phase currents typically rise to magnitudes in excess of six times the motor's full load current. The slight mismatch of the differential CTs, combined with the relatively large phase current magnitudes, produce a false differential current which will be seen by the relay. This current will be misinterpreted by the relay as a ground fault unless the ground fault element's pickup is set high enough to disregard this error. Phase Differential Current Protection This feature consists of three instantaneous overcurrent elements for phase differential protection. The differential trip element function can only be used if both sides of each stator phase are brought out of the motor for external connection such that the phase current going into and out of each phase can be measured. The differential element subtracts the current coming out of each phase from the current going into each phase and compares the result or difference with the differential pickup level. If this difference is equal to or greater than the pickup level for a period of time greater than a user's specified delay, a trip will occur. Separate pickup levels and delay times are provided for the motor starting and running conditions. In this example, both sides of each of the motor's stator phases are being passed through a single CT. 
This is called the flux balance configuration and is the most desirable owing to its sensitivity and noise immunity. Current unbalance or single phasing protection. The contribution of current unbalance to the thermal capacity used was covered earlier. Here, the magnitude of the current unbalance is used to detect and trip the motor if a single phase condition occurs. Single phase refers to the situation when one of the three phases is no longer being supplied to the motor. If enabled, a trip and or alarm occurs once the unbalance magnitude exceeds the current unbalance trip pickup for a period of time specified by the current unbalance alarm trip delay. Under and over voltage protection. In an under voltage condition, the stator field will be weak. To compensate for the weak stator field, the slip will increase, resulting in increased rotor current and rotor heating. If, on the other hand, the motor is in an over-voltage condition, the increased voltage produces a marginal increase in field strength, but a large increase in stator heating. The rotor will slip a bit less, resulting in a slight decreased rotor current. The overall result of an under- or over-voltage condition is an increase in current and motor heating and a reduction in overall motor performance. The undervoltage trip should be set to 90% of nameplate unless otherwise stated on the data sheets. Motors that are connected to the same source may experience a temporary undervoltage when one of the motors starts. To override these temporary sags, a time delay set point has been incorporated into the undervoltage element. The overvoltage element should be set to 110% of the motor's nameplate unless otherwise stated in the data sheets. The undervoltage element can be considered as backup protection for the overload element. If the voltage decreases, the current will increase, causing an overload trip. In some cases, if an undervoltage condition exists, it may be desirable to trip the motor faster than the overload element. Accelerator Timer The relay's thermal model is designed to protect the motor under both starting and overload conditions. The acceleration timer may enhance the motor protection scheme. For example, a given motor should always complete a start within 2 seconds. If the safe stall time is 8 seconds and a failure occurred such that the motor was held in a stall condition, the motor would normally remain at stall for a total of 8 seconds before the thermal model would generate a trip. The accelerator timer could be configured to generate a trip if the motor remained at stall for more than 3 seconds, thereby reducing the stress on both the motor and driven equipment. When enabled, the acceleration timer trip element functions as follows. A motor start is assumed to be occurring when the relay measures the transition from no motor current to some value of motor current. Typically, motor current will rise quickly to a value in excess of the motor's rated full load current. At this point, the acceleration timer will start to time. If the motor's current does not fall below the overload curve pickup level before the program time has expired, the relay will generate an acceleration trip. If the acceleration time is variable, the acceleration timer must be set to a time value slightly longer than the longest acceleration time. Note that some soft starts limit the motor's starting current to less than the motor's rated full load current. Therefore, if the relay does not see the motor's current rise to a value greater than the motor's rated full load current within one second after a start, the acceleration timer will be ignored.